Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Bible Illustrated Hands. Hands. In the case anyone was wondering, I was on a brief vacation and therefore complete lack of uploads. But guess who's back? It's me. Uh, today's question comes from everyone. Everyone asks, uh, Hey Boyan, can you share your thoughts on the new Patriarch of Serbia, Porfirie? Thanks everyone, because everyone, everyone and their grandmother asked me this. Uh, what do I think of uh, the new Patriarch? Uh, somebody has remarked that uh, his uh, title isn't actually Patriarch of Serbia, granted. He is the Serbian Patriarch, but uh, details. So anyway, what are my thoughts of our new uh, Patriarch Porphyrius? I will use the English rendering of his name, which is sort of Latin Greekish something. Um, some context. Uh, patriarch Porphyrius is rather young for a patriarch, and I think, and God willing, we will uh, we will be looking at him for at least twenty years. God God, God grant us this. Um, he was um, a, a hieromonk, that is a priest monk, in a, a very famous monastery here in Serbia called Kovil. And this monastery, as far as I know, wasn't all that famous until Porphyrius came around. Uh, he was a bit of a King Midas there, as it, as it were, because everything he would touch would turn to gold. Like, hey, let us, rehab, uh, let us improve the singing here at monastery. Wham! The singing of Kovil uh, mo monks is absolutely bo uh, beautiful. And if you Google uh, Kovil monks uh, or Kovilski monasi, I will link in the description if I remember, which I generally don't, um, you will hear the chanting which is absolutely stunning, on par with, I don't know, best Russian or Athenite uh, chanting. Uh, then they started uh, produ uh, producing wines and hard liquors at the monastery, and it is one of the best things uh, if you're a tourist, that you can uh, bring out of the country because it is so amazing, so delicious and everything. Um, not only that, but uh, at the time, Hieromonk Porphyrius uh, was the epicenter um, of um, this young Orthodox crowd that attracted many artists, uh, many members of uh, the Academia, Intelligentsia and so on, uh, people that weren't really associated with orthodoxy at that time, which is an immense result, I, I can't even be begin to tell you. Up to that point, uh, the orthodox were primarily an educated elderly people. Uh, I, I'm sure that uh, there were a lot of exceptions to this rule, but it is with uh, Father Porphyrius that this has started to change. Uh, he was spearheading that paradigm shift. Um, I, as I said, everything he would touch, he would turn to gold. I remarked to a friend of mine that if you don't know a bishop's name, that means that bishop is good enough. But if you know a bishop's name, you know him because of something horrible or something exquisite. And thank God, uh, uh, at the time, Bishop Porphyrius was something uh, was someone you would know because of all the good things people were saying about him. Uh, I will uh, I will uh, name the land of the living uh, drug rehabil uh, rehabilitation commune, uh, which has given great results, and especially because we had another drug rehabilitation commune run. Uh, uh, run by the church, which um, proved to be disas disastrous because one of the protégés there ended up being killed by a priest who was running the whole thing. And there were signs that it will happen and sadly in the, in the end it did. But those things uh, aside, uh, uh, Father Porphyrius and later Bishop Porphyrius uh, really did an amazing thing there. Later on, he became uh, the Metropolitan of Zagreb, which, um, uh, if you guys know anything about the Balkan politics, you know that uh, us Serbs and Croats uh, don't really get along, to say the least, uh, <laughs> which is basically an euphemism uh, at what I'm trying to say. Uh, and I think that he was the man 
for all seasons. He was the man for the job uh, because he has tremendous talent in diplomacy and in knowing how to reach specific people, especially if you're uh, in such a post where the surrounding uh, um, factors aren't that amicable towards you. Um, that's that as far as uh, him being uh, a hero monk and him being um, an, uh, an, ar uh, an archbishop, that is the Metropolitan of Zagreb. Uh, now, uh, I have. Uh, uh, I will now speak of the election itself. Of course, I won't reveal everything I know because uh, it will do you no spiritual good and this is not a gossip or drama channel. Uh, but let me put it this way. Uh, before the election, there were basically two cliques of bishops. Uh, uh, one, uh, uh, we, Metropolitan Porphyrius uh, be uh, belongs to one such clique that is sort of pro-Serbian government, which is bad. Uh, the other clique was uh, basically uh, led by uh, late Metropolitan and Pilocius of Blessed Memory, and he, he is the guy, if you know from our previous videos, or any Orthodox site in the world at the time, um, he was the guy who basically managed to topple an anti-religious totalitarian regime. Now, the difference between these two cliques is that uh, here we also have a totalitarian, uh, totalitarian um, godless regime, but the church has opted to uh, to collaborate with it, which is uh, which did not find uh, support among a lot of faithful, myself included. Uh, so, um, uh, by the way, there are a lot of bad takes out there. Uh, I will give you one. Uh, recently, I saw this news that uh, this professor of the theological seminary here in Belgrade was removed from his post and a person on Twitter said uh, thank God this leftist professor was removed from this post uh, thank, uh, long live the Serbian patriarch who has upheld the traditional teaching this is a bad take on par with uh, uh, Hitler did great things for German industry or Yasenovac is a tourist attraction. Both of these things are very technically correct, but they are incredibly bad takes. And claiming that this uh, guy was removed from his post because uh, he's a leftist is not true at all. He was simply removed because he was criticizing the government. <laughs> you know, he was simply persecuted as a typical prophet of old Israel. That is the whole truth about it. So guys, uh, if you ever hear about someone you don't particularly like being removed in church circles, um, for example, uh, let's say you hear that uh, James Martin, uh, the Jesuit priest, was defrocked, and you're like, hooray! And uh, some local bishop uh, comes uh, and says, we removed uh, Father James Martin because of his untraditional ideas. And everybody's like, hurrah, huzzah, thank God. That might not at all be what it, the whole affair is about. It may be something much more simple. For example, maybe James Martin wrote a book on um, w uh, why the church should allow for threesomes to be allowed. And he, uh, and he did not want to split the profits with the bishop. And then the bishop simply used uh, that uh, occasion to remove him and claim tradition. So be very wary of that. Uh, people like to present their actions in the best possible way. So, uh, when, uh, when uh, uh, Metropolitan Porphyrius was uh, chosen, um, I was sort of like, sort of uh, disappointed initially. Uh, because uh, uh, because I don't think uh, that supporting this government in any shape, way, or form um, is a good thing. But then again, supporting or not supporting this government is n basically a political, i.e. worldly matter. It isn't a spiritual matter. And as a spiritual guy, uh, 
as the sting of the spirit, this is an absolutely best cho uh, choice for the church. Also, uh, I know that Metropolitan, uh, or uh, His Grace, Patriarch Porphyrius, uh, knows how to step out of his out of his bounds, out of his comfort zone, to do what is the right thing. And this is the most important thing uh, I could have heard about him. And um, as far, at least as far as I'm concerned, Axios, 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 with triple capital A's, literally. Uh, uh, I have seen some people, you know, taking some strange comments regarding uh, the current patriarch. I hope that he's an anti-ecumenist. <laughs> like, is ecumenism even a thing? I mean, is there really anyone out there who does not think it is just a boring office thing that is done that re really doesn't lead anywhere, honestly? I mean, uh, people were circulating pictures of uh, patriarch, Por uh, well, bishop at the time, Porphyrius, like kissing uh, Pope's hand, and guys, that's protocol. I mean, uh, I was part of this Orthodox forum, and uh, the uh, the administrator of the pro uh, forum posted this homily, and everybody started, you know, throwing lightning bolts. Who is this heretic? Depose of him, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, it was the first speech given by St. Mark of Ephesus, uh, at the Council of Florence. Okay, we know how that went. <laughs> but, you know, even St. Mark wasn't, oh, heresy, he still, you know, went there, gave them a lesson and concluded that, like most of ecumenistic effort, this literally doesn't lead anywhere. Uh, I'm also uh, reminded of young upstarts uh, who actually had a goal uh, to step in front of Patriarch Paul, basically the, the greatest Serbian saint we've had in, I don't know, last 50 years, 70 years, yeah, 70 years, um, uh, when he was escorting um, uh, a delegation of Anglicans who were supposed to serve uh, the Christmas, ma uh, Christmas Mass uh, in the uh, chapel of the Serbian Patri Patriarchate, which is something that uh, the Serbian Church has allowed Anglicans to do for the past, uh, I don't know, at least 50 years. And this man, this man who was testified by the Spirit, who will, I think it's only a matter of minute, will be canonized. You had young upstarts who are there to oppose the, ecumen uh, the ecumenist <laughs> patriarch, not ecumenical patriarch, but the ecumenist patriarch. So, uh, when you start worrying that this patriarch might be ecumenist or something, it's usually just diplomacy, and I mean, it's definitely diplomacy, it's nothing more. Uh, so, Axios, I think that uh, he's a terrific choice, he, uh, I mean, the choice is made in a good, good part by the Holy Spirit, so <laughs> I would assume that uh, he knows precisely which man to put here where uh, he needs to put. Um, uh, I'm uh, I'm back. Uh, I hope to post video uh, on Saint uh, uh, Xenia of Saint Petersburg today, and I hope to upload much, much more often, starting today. Pray for me, and um, uh, I wish you all a happy uh, a happy preparatory phase before Orthodox Great Lent. And for you on, uh, on Western calendars and uh, Western denominations, I wish you all a very blessed Lent. Bye!